Alright guys, back at you with another GGD uh, Reaper-ish guide. So, someone in the last video commented they wanted to know how to come up with uh, the MIDI tracks and stuff. And so I'm going to kind of lay out, because um, in the first video I fleshed out the process of setting it up and getting it all set on each individual track. So on this one... Um, it's actually really cool that the new kit came out because now I can go through and set it up because I set invasion up once and then I just use the same start file. So it's cool kind of going back through. So, um, so here we go. You have it all set up exactly the way that it was set up. Now in the last video, I didn't go through the naming of everything. So I'll tell you what I did as far as going through the naming. I'm going to pull up this here. So um i'm fortunate enough to have two monitors i had this up on one monitor and what i did was go through each one of these and started with the kick because i want to know what track kick is coming out of so then you can you can click here and the kick comes out so you can see it's just coming out of that one so i named that one kick then do that again kind of track it down the contact one the contact one's always going to the this this is always going to be on there because everything here is underneath drums so it's all i mean obviously it's going to always be under there but find the one underneath here and i already kind of have them labeled so I just went through each one and named them and so at the end you get this um and i don't care if even if i mean if you set it up the way i showed you in the first video they're all going to be named like this anyways. So if you just want to take a look at this and pause it a bunch of times and kind of get get it set up that way, we'll do that. So then the second thing that I do to make it sort of seamless when it comes to writing is I'm going to double click here. It pulls up all of this. I go through and name all of these. And I'm not a drummer, so if there's any drummers watching these, I probably mess up these terms. But I wrote these terms so that I can understand them. And so sort of in the same way as I did the first one, I had, maybe I can half monitor both of them here. So I had GGD pulled up here. Let me see, can I move that? Yep, GGD pulled up here and the piano roll open here. So it kind of went through and just, I started up at the top, like, okay. So see, I haven't set these up. So, okay, so we'll start at the bottom, right? So you're kind of going up through the piano roll. Something I noticed inter that was interesting with the with this, this is the same sound as this. I didn't label it because it's the same sound, but I thought that was interesting. Maybe that was like an error or something. I think I just think that's kind of cool. So, you know, starting down here. Something that makes this different than Invasion is that there's only one kick. They had a double kick, uh, an Invasion down here. There was kick left kick and then the automatic track where it automatically chose which one was left and right kick uh, this one just has the one kick which like I'm fine with I usually only used one anyways so then here snare so there are little sections and something that I think is super cool about get good drums is it's intuitive in the sense that all of these are snare hits but they're different kinds of hits so you have snare just a regular hard like hard halpern hit right there double um i haven't actually found a practical use for that um, because i'm not a drummer so i'm not sure like where that's supposed to be at a light hit that's kind of cool of a cool sound i don't know if side stick is the actual term for that but that's i know what i know in my head when i read that what that means so whatever and then just like a light tap i think this was just for ghost notes and i don't think invasion has this little ghost notes and matt loves to use those um those ghost note fills and stuff so i think it's really cool to, it's going to be fun to use this so then going through the toms and you can see it right over here what it is and so to relabel it just right click twice so you'll hear it but if you right click twice like double click it with with right click okay so then just kind of go up through here so i'm going to go up here i'm actually going to finish labeling these China, 
trying to stop. So what is that? Splash. And this is another splash. But it's a little bit higher, so I'm going to call it And I would say, you know, I'm not a drummer. And so the point is to make them where you where you know what they are. So that's the What is that? Hitting the sticks together? stack and then big stack and then if you're not a drummer I, I'm not a drummer S splash stack and stacks are cool like effects things so if you go on YouTube and you watch um, watch Matt Halpern's like he did one of Loon and Marigold Marigold's my favorite one because you can hear the ghost notes where he does a live playthrough of it you can hear like the dun, 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 dun. it's like really it's really cool check it out um, and so from there, now, now you have them all labeled. And so you just double click. And if you don't have a MIDI thing set up here, you can just go to insert new MIDI item and you can literally just drag to whatever size you, you need it to be. Um, and then double click. And then from there, it's just, um, you know, you can use the scroll wheel to do this. Um, and then from there, it's just kind of messing with it, playing around with it. And so I came up with this. So I'll play what it is for you, just so you can hear it, and then um, and then we'll I'll go about how I would write like an original, like drum, part. All right. And then if there's any if there's any buzzing, my interface has been acting really weird, and I have to do a, a really weird chain to get it to actually show so I'm not sure um, if you hear that while the drums are playing it's not the program it's my computer so so let's say let's say screw this so right click grabs everything so if you want to grab multiple things cool you can do it that way left click to get off of that so there are tons of options so you'll notice Some, so a cool trick as a shortcut. You can, you can right click highlight all of them. Control C, click here, Control V. So now, there. So you'll notice that this is red. So these are the velocities. So something that, uh, that this is something that I've learned how to do with Get Good Drums. And I don't know if other drum softwares have this, but basically if you're thinking about what a drummer would do, He's not going to always hit at the same same speed, and he's not always going to hit with the same intensity. So having that control over the velocities makes it sound more realistic. So whenever you first insert them, they're, they're going to be at the highest velocity possible. Normally, I'll drag them somewhere around 100. You can kind of feel it out as you go. Um, and so now this is what this sounds like. If I'm like, well, the kick sounds like he's hitting the kick like really hard. You can highlight all those and drag him down a little bit. So then it's like, okay. And from there, it's just kind of playing with it. Um, 
So I mean, get on YouTube and watch watch your favorite drummers, watch drum th- drum playthroughs of your favorite songs, and be able to kind of identify what they're doing, because even though, like, even though l- learning a new instrument is super difficult, with something like this, um, you can at least understand somewhat of what a drummer is doing, and you can kind of get a sense for what sounds you may want to hear, and get better at programming these things so that you can make your sounds and your mixes sound like you you have a drummer they're playing with you and you can kind of mock it up Uh, and i really like this way of writing because in doing this you get a feel for your song more so than you would if you didn't because if it was just guitar and bass like you could be playing in double time or half time The drums are really what drive the song. You know, you've heard people do acoustic covers of heavy songs and heavy covers of acoustic songs. I I would say the biggest defining factor in the energy of a song is the drums. And so learning how to do this stuff, super helpful. And so just like with the last video, if you guys have any questions, uh, shoot, shoot a comment down below. I know someone from the last video had asked me about this and I said I'd do it by the end of the weekend and I mean it's Monday so I'm I'm usually about this late so my apologies but I hope for anyone out there who who wants to get into this and I'm by no means claiming to be an expert but for anyone who wants to get into this uh, and you use Reaper as your DAW I really hope this was super helpful for you and uh, be sure you know if you want more content like this or if you have questions or anything just shoot something in the comments i'm having a lot of fun making these youtube videos it's actually not as difficult as one would one might think so uh, i might try and be posting a little bit more some kind of some different content some similar stuff some music related some not but i've i've been really thinking about posting on a regular basis so If you like what you see or want to see more of it, um, just hit the subscribe or, or not or whatever, you know. I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks for watching my video and I hope it was informative. Peace.